Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a preview of the Guards Armoured, a new division available in the upcoming Tribute to Normandy 44 DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC so a big thanks to them. Also please remember that this was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side feel free to pause the video and take a look but we're going to be jumping straight on in. Uh, as usual, we're going to be going through all of the units available and then I'll put together a quick deck. So let's go ahead and start in the Recon tab. So first of all, we have the Willys HMG. Not as good as the American Jeep because it doesn't have radio. But 6, 12 availability in A and B. Then we have the Recce. These guys can be brought in with all the different types of universal carriers. So we've got the two inch carrier, the MMG carrier, which has a Bren and a Vickers, and the standard universal carrier, which just has the Bren. Two inch carrier is always a nice choice, unless you want mobility, in which case you just bring them in the Jeep. Uh, but four, eight, and 12 availability throughout the phases. Then for the scouts, they can be brought in with the universal carrier. They can also be brought in with the white truck, which is nice, and the Stuart Recce. The white truck doesn't have any armament and will despawn when you unload, but it is armoured on the way in, which means that it's harder to be unloaded from um, under suppression. doesn't really matter when it comes to using scouts, though. But 5, 10, 15 availability in A, B, and C. Then we have snipers. Snipers can also come in with the different universal carriers and the Jeep. 3, 6, and 12 availability of those snipers is available. Bear in mind, snipers have been nerfed. Their aim time and their rate of fire is the main things that have been affected. So they'll still be just as effective at taking out support weapons, but they won't be as good at like pinning infantry squads over time. So just bear that in mind. Moving on, we have the Daimler AC, which is the first of the vehicles we're going to be seeing today. There are a lot of vehicles in this particular battle group. But the Daimler AC is the first, which has a 15 round per minute, 40 millimeter gun with 75 millimeters of penetration. It's got 40 km per hour off-road speed and 80 km per hour on-road speed. 6, 12, and 18 availability throughout the phases. This sort of unit is useful for trying to take out some transports early on uh, but honestly without HE it kind of lacks any sort of staying power for 25 points. Then we have the scouts with the PIA so 25 points, 3 available in A, 6 in B and 9 in C. These can be used to supplement infantry AT in some, some cases, so some divisions you, you do do that but in this one I'm not so sure because you're gonna have so much armor but Choices are the same as the other scouts. Then we have the Staghound, only available in Phase A in this division. You get three available at three vet. Good old Staghound. I do like the Staghound. I think, as I mentioned before, it has a bit more staying power than the Daimler, whilst still providing the same sort of uh, firepower against early transports and light vehicles. So you get a 37 mil gun, but it also has HE and two machine guns, so it can help pin down enemy infantry a little bit better. Then we have the Stuart 5 Recon. This has the 50 cal and two 30 cals. 5, 10, 15 availability across the board. The 50 cal makes this actually a very strong Stuart. I'm not sure if it's going to stay in this division because it does have the Desert Rat symbol, which makes me think that it's supposed to be in the Desert Rats. But either way, a strong Stuart. And I would definitely recommend maybe using it while you can. <laughs> then finally, there is four cards of Cromwell 4s. And these Cromwell 4 recons, they are very abundant because you get 5, 10 and 15 availability throughout the phases which means if you bring in all cards in phase C that is 60 Cromwell 4 recon tanks. The recon tanks are really nice because they can spot for themselves when engaging enemy infantry and support weapons. So in this case 75 mil gun, two machine guns, still decent off-road speed because the Cromwell it got buffed a little while back to increase its speed and that 45 km per hour off-road speed is very good for a tank. And then 63 km per hour on-road speed, 70 mm of frontal armor, radio recon, all round, nice Cromwell. 
Moving on to the infantry tab, we have first of all the defense group. Defense group you can come in either with the Bedford or the CMP trucks. You generally always want to use the CMP trucks if you have them left because they are faster. So 80 km per hour road speed for the CMP and only 60 km per hour road speed for the Bedford. It defaults to the Bedford, so do make sure to change that. Um, but otherwise, defense group, same as normal. Field engineers, same as usual. Five-man squad with the TNT, nine available in A, 18 available in B, and 27 available in C. Again, you're going to want to switch out of the Lloyd carry here, probably into either the Jeeps or the Bedfords, depending on how many Jeeps you have left. But early on, if you are going to bring these early on, you'll probably want to prioritize the Jeeps. Then engineer leader can be brought in with the Jeeps or a carrier command, which does have a Bren. It's just the same as the universal carrier, but it does have the, the radio wires on it. This is basically the same setup as field engineers. It just has the leadership trait. Then we have the motorized rifles. These guys have been changed a little bit in terms of their models. You can see that we have like the engineer guy here and uh, the other chap. These of course can be brought in with half tracks. That is the main appeal of them. And in this division, the British do get some 50 cal half tracks, which is nice. So only 12 of them. So you do have to bear that in mind, but it is nice to bring. 50 cal half tracks are rather obnoxious. And you might want to make take make use of them in phase A in their smaller numbers in order to uh, get a good advantage. Like if you brought in two sets of motorized rifles in phase A with 50 cal half tracks, you could have all 12 of these 50 cal half tracks running down your enemy early on, which could be pretty scary. Moving on, we have the rifles, the classic. Uh, well, these guys have two stands, seven Lee Enfields and Brens. I think the setup of the rifles was changed a little while back. Um, so they have two stands now, but uh, nine, 18 and 27 and Bedford CMP choices for transports. I might be wrong about that, but either way, that's the setup right now. Then we have the motorized rifle leader, three stands, Bren, smoke grenade, actually a really nice setup, I think, for a leader squad, just because they have uh, all of their weapons can be used within 100 meters. They've got smoke uh, to keep them covered. They're only 25 points, not too bad. Then we got the standard rifle leader with the PIA, 25 points again, nice and cheap. Can also be brought in B. Good to supplement Piats if you're relying primarily on rifles and field engineers rather than motorized rifles. You do also have a card of rifles with Piat though, uh, which do have the 8 Lee Enfield 2 Bren setup with the Piat. 9 available in A, 18 in B, and 27 in C. Finally, the Assault Engineers. 10 Lee Enfields, Bren, Flamethrower, Piat. Nice all round squad with shock trait, so pretty solid, and six available in A, 12 available in B. If you manage to bring these in B, I think you're gonna get the best value out of them. And since you only have six cards of infantry in this division, I think this is a great phase B card. Moving on to the tank tab, we have the M5A1 Stuart Command Tank. Comes in at one veterancy, Three available in A, six available in B. Could be nice to supplement leaders uh, because you're probably going to put no leaders in your infantry tab, I would imagine, just so that you get the maximum amount of availability. And then there's a card of the Stuart Sixes, the M6 with the two 30 cals, 55 millimeters of frontal armor, 44 kilometer per hour off road speed is nice. Just an annoying unit that the enemy is going to have to deal with with AT. And if they don't have any AT, it's just going to sit there and slowly whittle down enemy forces. And for 30 points, you can kind of spam them around a little bit. Then we have nine cards of Shermans. Classic Sherman 5 with the 75mm gun, 50 cal and two 30 cals. 100 millimeters of frontal armor. 5, 10, 15 availability. Which means you can have an awful lot of Shermans. <laughs> if you want to but I uh, probably wouldn't recommend setting it up like that. There's three cards of Sherman Leaders, which is nice. Uh, two, four, six availability. Again, could be used uh, in order to provide veterancy for your infantry, not just your tanks. Then we have the Challengers. Challengers are only available in Phase C. 
But at 2 vet, these things could be pretty scary late game. That would put them up to 8 round per minute rate of fire. Their base round per minute rate of fire is the same as the 17 pounder. So 6 round per minute, 170 penetration. It's a good gun. Just bear in mind that these guys aren't very well armoured in comparison to other units with just as big guns. 85 points is not too bad. It's cheaper than the Firefly. Finally, we do have the Fireflies. We've got the Firefly 5C. Uh, the Firefly 5C, it comes with the 17 pounder, of course. 170 penetration, 6 round per minute rate of fire with the 30 cal. 100 mils of frontal armor, same as the Sherman 5. It is a bit slower, though. Bear in mind, goes down from 33 to 29 kilometers per hour and 36 to 41 on road speed. So it does drop quite sub substantially, but 3, 6, and 9 availability fireflies are always very efficient for taking care of enemy panthers and tigers. Then we've got Firefly 5C Harris, which is just a bit of a reskin for the ace. Looks cool, adding the applique armor of all of the tracks. Very nice indeed. All right, let's moving on to the support tab. Support tab's pretty thin in this division. Just got two inch mortars, classic 50 mil mortar with only the 540 meter range. And we brought in with the light carrier or the willies. Six, 12, 18 availability. Then we got the Vickers, six, 12, 18 availab availability. No crazy transports for them. Three cards of Bedford supply trucks available in A, B, or C. And then we have the Cromwell six, only one card of Cromwell 6. Now I find this kind of interesting in that we have all this other armor, but in the support tab we only get one card of Cromwell 6s because these are going to be pretty important for dealing with enemy AT guns at range. But yeah, not able to use that many of them in this case. Only three available in A and six available in B. Then for commanders, infantry commander, dingo commander, and Sherman 5 Commander. Moving on to the anti-tank tab. Carter Piats for 10 points piece. 6, 12, 18 availability. Standard two-man squad. And we've got the six pounders. Like all of the other British six pounders, they do have the APCR at the 1,000 meter range with the 175 mil of penetration if you need to get yourself through the heavy front armor of a German tank. That range is very short though, usually you'd be just be using the standard AP shell. But 3, 6, 9 availability, 3 cards total. You can also bring them in with the Royal Marine uh, to do it as well. Then we have, or the Engineer, sorry, I think that's Engineer. Uh, Stuart, the Remy. Uh, then we have the Wolverines, 2 cards of Wolverines. They don't have APCR under the Brits, unfortunately. But still 130 mils of penetration with 8 round per minute rate of fire. It's okay. 4, 8, for 65 points. Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> Better than that though, you're probably just going to be relying on this tab for 17 pounders that you can hide in heavy cover. So 4 cards of 17 pounders available. 2, 4, and 6 availability. And can be brought in with the Crusader Tractor. This is going to be the first time I think we see this in this division. This is a supply truck with a 15,000 supply available. It's new. Pretty cool addition to the game. And uh, this is the first unit that can use it as a transport if you need some extra supply. And then we have the Achilles. 2, 4 and 6 availability. 17 pounder as its main gun. 8 round per minute rate of fire is uh, actually it's slightly better interesting. I thought that these had 6 round per minute rate of fire but it seems like the Firefly and the Challenger don't get the same rate of fire as both the Achilles and the 17 pounder making them a little bit more valuable in that case. I never noticed that before so my bad. But anyway 2, 4 and 6 availability for the Achilles. Yeah 2 cards Moving into anti-air, we have the CMP Polston, 4, 8, and 12 availability of these. Usually you're not going to use these too much just because individually they're kind of trash and 
if you're going to be bringing in three or four, you might as well just be using Crusader AAs, which you get three cards of. And these are twin 20 mils with decent rate of fire. Three, six, nine availability. And then there's also, of course, the Bofors, which has that sweet extra range, which is very useful. Uh, but three, six, and nine availability. A bit more of a defensive AA option compared to the Crusade AA. This is something that you could combine with your tanks when you're making a push, whereas the Bofors will take a little while to catch up because I think all of these transports will disappear when it unloads. Moving on to the artillery tab, we have first of all spotters available in A and B. Three and six availability can be brought in with the universal carrier or the willies. Get the Lanchester, which is cool, and the smoke grenades. Then we have the artillery commander. Two, four, and six availability. I haven't mentioned that like the artillery commander now has the artillery leader trait. This is something that was added previously quite a, quite a while ago now, but something that people I think still forget. But basically, when an artillery leader is near a tube artillery unit, not a mortar, it will give them radio trait and reduce their dispersion. Really, really strong, uh, particularly in cases where a unit doesn't have radio. So like a 25 pounder here already has radio, so it's not as crazy useful in this case, but it will still reduce the dispersion of the 25 pounder. So bear that in mind. Then we have 81 mil mortars available for 812. 107 mil mortars available for 812 in terms of face A, C, B, and C. Two cards of 25 pounders, three, six, and 12 availability on these. Sextons. Just a 25 pounder in an armored hull. Two, four, and six availability. Nice thing about the Sexton is it does actually get a lot of ammunition. That's definitely worth pointing out. You get 90 HE shells in a Sexton. Uh, so if you bring them in early on, you're not going to really have to resupply them until phase B. Then we have the 7.2 inch howitzer. Uh, this thing is a beast. 180 three millimeters more or less of HE going down range. Rate of fire is a little bit low on them, but they certainly pack a punch. One available in A, two in B, and four in C, and they come in with free vet, which pushes them to full rate of fire. Very, very nice. And then there's two cards of M1A1 long toms available in A, B, and C, one, four, and, um, one two, and four availability. This is not getting the free veterancy, so maybe not as valuable as the 7.2 inch in this case. Also the 7.2 inch, you can see the damage difference there as well, makes a big difference. Then finally, there is a card of off map. Sherman 5 OP with 140 mils off map. 140 mil off map is not as good as the 150, but uh, Still going to be useful for kind of pinning down an area in a pinch. Moving on to the air tab. Air tab's pretty light in the guard's armoured. Mosquito is your recon aircraft. Two available in A and four in B. 645 kilometer per hour speed is very fast. And it has medium resilience, so that's really quite nice. Then we have the Mosquito. The fighter Mosquito with the 20... Mil, four, four 20 mil Hispanos and the four 30 cows. 550 kilometer per hour speed. Can head on things pretty well, but in a turn fight, it will lose out. It's also pretty good at strafing. But four, six, and eight availability on those. There's a card of Spitfire Mark 9s. Four, six, and eight availability double Hispano, double 50 cal, really decent setup, 610 kilometer per hour speed, really nice aircraft, well, very nice aircraft, I mean, I'm a Brit, I love a Spitfire, of course I do, right, Typhoon, 227 kilogram bombs, two of those, one available in A, two available in B, and four available in C, 
as a fighter, these can be okay with their 420 mils as well and like ground strafing after they've dropped their bombs. But usually you just use them to get in and out with a bomb because for a fighter bomber at 575 kilometers per hour speed, it's pretty fast and they're relatively resilient. And then we have the Typhoon with the RP3 AT rockets. Eight of those uh, with 3.3 damage. Going to have to land four of them to kill a heavy tank. Uh, two, four, and six availability on those. And that is your lot for the guards armoured. Let's go ahead and put together a quick deck. So, starting in the recon tab, I'm probably going to be opting to bring in the Stuart 5 recon. I think the 50 cal on this is going to make it pretty good. I'm also tempted to bring in some recon Cromwells with high veterancy. Could also up at this to a five, but I think having numbers of those is going to be more important. And then finally, I might just bring in some recce so that we have a few two man squads I can dot around. The infantry tab, this one's going to be kind of hard. I think we definitely put these in B. I think I settled on that already. Then it's just a matter of what we put elsewhere. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to up that much of this. I'm pushing the rifles Pia. I think the best thing to do actually would be to bring in some 50 cal half track guys in phase A. It's a really expensive cards. We go ahead and we bring in at least one card of rifles of Pia in phase C. I think that's a good idea. Rifles of Pia in phase B, and then maybe another card of rifles in phase A, like standard card of rifles. The double motorized rifles with 50 cals. It's a nice choice. I don't know if it's a bit overkill. It might be better to just do one card with no veterancy, because you're still going to get the suppression from the 50 cal anyway. And then you can opt to bring in maybe some field engineers with the jeeps in order to get some ground early on. That looks okay-ish. Moving on to the tank tab, let's throw in some leaders. So probably going to need phase A leaders and phase B leaders. That should be enough. Then we definitely bring Harris. I might bring Harris early on. So we have some early 17 pounders. We'll bring a card of Fireflies late game. Actually, maybe we do phase B Fireflies and phase C challenges. Although I think I'm thinking maybe I want to get the Achilles in the anti-tank tab. So let's just do let's just do phase C Fireflies. And we'll mix in some high vet tanks. So yeah, just like phase A two vet stewards, phase B two vet stewards, phase C two vet stewards, maybe. Each one of these cards is now three points, so that's maybe a bit much, but we'll come back to it if we need to. We're gonna put in the dingo. I like the dingo. Even if it isn't necessarily the best choice, I think here. The com the infantry command is probably the best choice. And then it's just a matter of like, do you want machine guns because you do actually have some cheap slots here to fill. The other thing is supply you've got to worry about because of the amount of artillery. Cromwell's definitely got to go in there. Let's just throw them in phase A. I think after phase A you're going to have access to decent artillery so you're not going to need these as much. Oh, the vet curve on these is so bad. I wish it was better. I think phase C Achilles could be pretty fun. Because with veterancy, you can push their rate of fire up quite substantially. Like that's already up to 10 round per minute rate of fire on a 17 pounder with one vet. In phase A, we'll do CMP truck with 17 pounders. And I think that'll do. I don't know if you need six pounders in this deck. I am going to bring in some Crusader AAs. 
think we're going to do a phase B card of both is. Making sure that I bring them in with the CMP truck just because it's a lot faster. More Crusader AAs in phase C. Definitely going to be bringing in both cards of the 7.2 inch artillery. In this case, tempted to bring them in with the Crusader tractor. It's quite expensive though. 180 points for one piece of artillery is a lot to ask. And then we just do like a card of sextons in phase A to provide us with close artillery support. Then in the air tab, I think you're going to need the typhoons just to help you deal with king tigers. So those coming in early on is actually not a terrible idea because you still get two on a card and then a card of fighters. I'm thinking actually we just go like two vet mosquitoes because this isn't going to be something you use that much but it'd be nice to have the mosquitoes to intercept enemy aircraft particularly like bombers late game but also have like the typhoon to deal with like I say enemy heavy tanks. This is definitely going to be a supply card. I think we have a phase C supply card. The main thing I'm looking at here is where do we remove stuff? I might not need the Sherman 5s in phase B. That's one, one thing I'm thinking because we have the Cromwell 4s which will kind of take up the mantle there. And I think we do a phase B card of supply and then we can add another leader in here. Potentially the artillery commander might be a good idea because uh, then I can use it on the front line in a pinch but I can also use it with my artillery on the back line to make these have less dispersion. That could be nice. The other thing is obviously bringing in lots more artillery could be also another idea like lots of 25 pounders. But I'm kind of liking the look of this. Maybe I can make these two vet fireflies because we're going to have the Achilles here. Yeah, I don't mind the way that looks. I think we're going to leave it there. That was actually not too difficult to build. I think this uh, division is kind of standard when it comes to Commonwealth. I think it will be relatively fun to play. Although I think it could have been themed a little bit better. Like say if you didn't have so much access to AT guns and you didn't have so much access to tube artillery and instead you relied more on Achilles, more on Wolverines, more on like Sextons. I think that would be a, a cool way to, to make this division rather than uh, relying on all this tube artillery. But I, I know that that's in there because of historical accuracy. Anyway, I'm going to rely on some of these. It's, it's nice to get quite a lot of veterancy in this division because everything's so abundant. So you can afford to up there quite a lot of stuff. We'll have to see how it plays out, but that's where I'm going to leave it. Let me know what you think of the guard's armor down in the comments, of course. But that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.